Hello guys, welcome to another video of the FreeFM series. In this episode we want to talk about regions and subdomains, a very important feature of FreeFM for performing various simulations. Let's go for it. So I said that is important because, you know, in simulations, you usually want to have like different material properties, different like characterizations, different simulation parameters in different parts of the domain, of the computational domain. And in FreeFM, it is called regions. So similar to previous episodes, we have a couple of examples. Examples are a bit long, so I go through them with, uh, without wasting time. So I'll pen them in a tom, my editor. And uh, yeah, the first example is actually a base for the rest of the examples. The, the other are very similar to this. And uh, that's actually related to a diffusion problem, a transient time dependent diffusion problem. We have already talked about all the theoretical aspects of this formulation of the numerical implementation and also FreeFem for, you know, mesh generation, weak formulation and all these things. So, uh, you know, this can be a nice uh, code as a template, as a skeleton for diffusion problems. But uh, the objective of the video is not this. We are going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, variable uh, properties. And in this case, the variable property is related to the diffusion coefficient. In this case, it is DC. But first I go through the example, through the whole example, and then I emphasize the points that are different in the others. So, uh, as I said, this is related to a diffusion problem in 2D. We have a couple of parameters for the, the mesh size and then L and D. So this is actually a simple square, a rectangle, let's say, and then a circle inside it. And a circle in this case has, you know, is, uh, is hollow because you can see here, this is something we already discussed for the circle. It is hollow because we have a negative sign here. And then we, we apply some, you know, concentration. In this case, you know, this is U. It can be temperature. It can be seen as concentration or any other quantity that is then released from the inner circle to the surrounding environment. And that's actually the problem we are going to solve. So in this case, uh, you know, this is the diffusion coefficient, which is quite small. And then CBC is actually the boundary condition that we apply to the in internal the circle. This is the time step, final time. And then we have a parameter here that save each, like if save every five steps is to save some disk space and these kind of things. This is, you know, one of the things that we usually have in FreeFM codes. And order out for visualization using Paraview. This is something we already discussed. We discussed this in a previous video. And then we have some macros for uh, defining the gradient in the diffusion term in the weak form of the diffusion term. And then we have two different labels for the wall, which is the surround, which is the rectangle, which is the square here defined using L and D. And then here we have the border, uh, the B5, another border defined as a circle. And for the circle, we have another label because we want to apply an, another type of boundary condition to that. Then here we have like uh, the size, the mesh size being calculated. So this is just, you know, kind of statement, making sure that we have enough uh, elements in each direction. Although this is only two, but yeah, this is, we already know that we have provided enough, uh, you know, elements in each direction because L and D, they are one. These are the widths and height let's say, and then this is just to make sure that we have enough elements in each direction. And then we generate the mesh. As I said, the circle is hollow, is empty. Then we define a finite element space, in this case P1, because this is a diffusion case and that's okay. And then we have C and C all defined based on space P1. And C all is actually the previous value of C computed in previous time step, I mean. And then here we have the diffuse problem, uh, defined as var f, you know, these are all the things that we have already discussed. And this is the problem formulation. 
This is the transient term, but the linear part of it, and this is the linear part of the transient term, and this is for the diffusion part. So this is a very simple uh, equation, but we have also a boundary condition on inner wall, C equals CVC. And then we start by, pro, uh, by putting C equals zero. We have the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation A and RHS. And in these kind of problems, that's only the right hand side being changed over time. So we compute the left hand side only once, space P1, space P1 as C and V. And then right hand side only for the first iteration. And then over time, we compute right hand side in each uh, iteration of the loop, of the time loop. Then we start to loop over time till we reach the final time. And then we compute the right hand side, I'll compute C based on that. And each, if, if we have like inside 0, 5, 10, like this, we can save each is 5, we save the results in out 1. So I run this, this code, you know, this is uh, quite simple. So freefem, the name of the example, this is example 1. And uh, turning off verbosity. So uh, now it starts the iterations and it saves uh, you know a couple of files here. So now I need to run preview and open the files. They are grouped into this. So I open output one. Click OK. Apply. And this is actually uh, the domain. This is the mesh. And uh, yeah, for this one, I want to visualize C which is uh, the quantity of interest. And here it changed to another color map. So yeah, so this is actually the problem. You can see that it starts to diffuse to the environment, so to the surrounding environment. So this is something we apply to the circle and then it diffuses. So now you see that the diffusion coefficient is quite uniform because we have only one diffusion coefficient here, DC, and this DC is used here. But in the second example, so let me close Paraview and then uh, I can also remove the out file, but that's, that's not important. But yeah, let me remove all the out files. And in the second example, very similar to the first one, we have again DC, but we want to have a variable diffusion coefficient. And for doing that, we define first another finite element space, space P1, because we want to have each uh, element having its own coefficient for diffusion. And so we have P0. And then in P0, we, we define another variable called DE, in this case, like effective diffusion. And as you can see, we say that DC for parts this is actually the concept of uh, regions. We want to have DC in regions where X is less than or equal to the half of L, so the half of the widths. And then, like one tenth of DC in regions that X is more than L2, so in a second half. So we have like a high diffusion in the right side, sorry, in the left side of the domain and then a very slow diffusion in the right side. And then you see here that instead of, you know, DC, we use DE in the equation. So a space P1 type variable in, is used inside a weak formulation. And that's the only difference this example has in comparison to example one. And then we go to the, you know, the rest are the same, except that we have here out two as the name of the VTK files. So I run this one. So example two and turning off verbosity. And then you can see that how interesting the results would be. So I run preview again. And out two, I press OK, and here C, and another type, another color map, and then I press uh, the run a play button, and then you can see that in on the left hand side we have a faster diffusion, let's say a higher rate of diffusion, and this is a very very nice you know demonstration of uh, having like regions defined in freeform codes. In this case, they are defined using X, which is actually a P1 type, but 
it means that it literally means that you can have it defined on any kind of you know finite element variables it can be also a solution of another's equation and it gives you a lot of freedom to define whatever you like in freefem but you know a more sophisticated version of these things is encapsulated in a concept called region in actually a reserved word called region so let me close part of you and then i want to show you how it looks like so in example three you know we have like this is a base for the rest of the for example four and five but in example three we have like a mesh defined very similar to the mesh that we had in example one and two but in this case this is not hollow so for the fifth border when we generate the mesh it's not empty and then here you will see that freefem automatically creates two different regions for us because this is actually our box or container and then inside it we have a circle the inner circle and because this is inside of this the, the other mesh freefem separates those regions into two numbers that they have their own identifiers here you will see that how we can get those numbers actually because they're, they're just represented as numbers in freefem so uh you know this is a similar example so we have only l and r for the radius of the circle of the inner circle but uh, using these two numbers especially using l we can have like uh, the region number we can ask freefem for the region number of any part of the domain so here we have islet and solution because this is actually you know this is one of the uh, projects that i will discuss later in depth so this code comes from that project in which we had like a group of cells into one islet and then they are embedded inside a solution and they start to consume oxygen but this is uh, you know something we discuss later in this case you know the islet is just the inner circle so i asked freefem to tell me the label or the region number for islets by saying that mesh l2 l2 because this is actually the center of the mesh where the circle is located and the in solution is something very close to the origin which is part of the solution which is part of the other uh, of the surrounding environment and then i print the the region numbers to the terminal so if i run this example This example three you see that we have the mesh here and these are actually depicted in two different colors and here you see that we have two different region numbers region zero for the islet which is depicted using a black color and solution with region number one and later on as you will see in example four we can use these region numbers to assign different properties or different you know initial condition and stuff in these regions so in example four you know this is a very similar example to just pure diffusion problem but with different you know variable names this is another template for a diffusion problem we have the mesh and the mesh is not empty inside so the mesh is very similar to example three defined two finite element spaces pu0 for the diffusion problem and space p1 for the concentration and then you see here here comes the magic so we have the region numbers and then we say that space p0 d and d is the diffusion coefficient used here defined like this we say islet d times region equals islet and it means that assign islet d to d when region is islet and that's why i told you that it is this is actually the, the built-in uh, keyword or variable region and solution d when region is solution and we use the same technique to initialize the like the domain in this case this is the initial condition and we say that the initial condition is toward as the oxy old so the previous value of the of the state variable that we want to solve for which is in this case oxygen 
We say that the initial condition equals like the initial condition for the islet when the region is islet and initial condition of the solution when region is solution. So this is a really nice technique to define multi-material simulation, multi-volume simulation and all these things that you want to have like different materials on different characteristics for various parts of the domain. So you see that here we have like different uh, diffusion coefficient and also different initial conditions for uh, the islets and a solution. And then the rest is very similar to what we did before. In this case, we compute A in each uh, iteration, although this is not necessary. Uh, and then uh, we compute oxygen, we store oxy and oxy old, and then we continue the simulation. And in this case, we don't have any save each. We save the results in each iteration. So I run example four. And then the store solve and the mesh is uh, finer and that's why it takes a bit longer. So part of you, I open the group up four, I apply, and then you can see here that we have two regions, also two labels in part of you. And here comes, uh, you know, it's very nice demonstration of the fact that they, we have different like concentration here. Like we have a higher concentration inside and lower one outside. And that's because of uh, this actually initial solution. You can see that it's higher here. And then we use these regions, like this region variable to assign it to the initial condition. And as it goes on, you can see that it starts to diffuse. But the diffusion rate is like, it also goes inside because it starts to diffuse inside. So actually this, the conservation of mass, this mass is exposed to the environment. So it's reduced from here and then added to the environment. But what, let's do something else here. So I need to close part of you. And then uh, here, let's change this, uh, the, the coefficient of the islets, like the diffusion coefficient of the islets. Now here they are uh, very similar. But in this case, let's make it higher. So we expect like higher dissipation or dissolution inside the islets using this one. Just to demonstrate that we can have like different diffusion coefficients also inside, like inside and out. So I run part of you, I open examples, I click apply. And then here you see that uh, we have like the same initial conditions. And when I play this animation, you can see that we have like a slow diffusion outside, but a very fast one inside because it dissipated very fast. So as you can see that, yeah, this is like fast diffusion inside because no, they are all with the same concentration more or less, but outside it's just started to diffuse in the environment. So that was actually uh, the, the way that we can use these regions. And there is another you know, way to do this. Let me remove uh, the results files. And there is another way to do this, but uh, using some implicit functions. And this is something that we will also discuss in FreeFem later for some simulations. And this is actually a very useful technique. So same, same problem as example four. So everything is the same, but here you see that we have only the box, only the rectangle. There is nothing inside. No circle is defined here. And instead we have a function that defines a circle. You know, this is a technique that we used in the mesh adaptation and mesh refinement video as well. And we define a five function resembling level set, level set function, let's say, equals circle minus 0.5. And it means that, you know, regions inside this circle, inside this function are first uh, evaluated as one and the outside is zero. And when we deduct 0.5, it means that they are between positive 0.5 and negative 0.5. Just to demonstrate that some regions phi is positive, meaning the regions that are inside a circle and the regions that the phi is negative, 
outside of the circle. And then you can see here that they can use this one, this variable here, finite element function, as a type of P0 with the element type of P0 can be used to define a variable diffusion rate and also a variable initial condition for inside and outside. And this is actually the way I told you that you can use any kind of finite element function that can be a solution of another equation to define your own properties. Later on in FreeFem, I will show you some cool simulations using these techniques that you have like full control on the boundary condition and also on the you know various aspects of the solution because of this, because of this freedom that you can define you know variables based on the other variables. So we go on, we have the variable diffusion here, and then, uh, you know, we simulate uh, the problem. So the rest are the same. And uh, let's simulate it and see what happens here. So there should be only one minor change here, and that's actually something you already uh, saw in the mesh refinement video, that in this case, because this function is mapped into the mesh, we don't have like a smooth circle, but this is defined based on this mesh. And then if you want to have like a smoother one, we need to increase the mesh size. So let me run Paravio and then you see uh, what I mean. So I load this one. You see that we have only like the mesh, there is no circle inside, but with the oxy, you see that we have actually the map of the circle function of it. So this is a bit irregular, but still, you know, this is, uh, it works the way we want. The, the equation rate, the diffusion rate are equal, but you can later change it yourself and see the difference here, like what we did in example four. But here it shows you that the implicit definition of things, of diffusion rate, and also the initial condition work perfectly. And it helps you to define anything you want, even if you don't have like the mesh entities inside a mesh. And as I told you later on, we use these features in various simulations when the mesh is just like a simple rectangle or a simple cube, but we do a lot of things with it using this kind of freedom that we have in FreeFab. So I hope you find this video uh, useful. Uh, try to download the samples. You'll find a link in the description and you know play with these parameters and then you see uh, how cool it is. Yeah, see you in next videos. Bye.